Hello everyone. I am Masara Banda. Let me be talking about a certain Philippine hero who ha I have grown to admire over the course of my life. Jose Rizal was born on, well, by the way, this is Britannica. He's based in Britannica. So if you'd like to research more about him, you can look him up here. It's an encyclopedia, it's free. And if you'd like to study more about him, just check the description and click the link below. He, he was born in Calamba, Laguna, the Philippines around 1861 towards the December 30, 1896. Manila. Yes, he died rather young, around the age of 35, I think. He was a patriot, a physician, a man of letters who was an inspiration of the Philippine National Movement. Basically, the Nationalist Party and everything I've learned from political science came from this guy. Well, he not came from this guy. He just like, he had a big role to fill in all of that, you know? We even have a subject for him, G. Rizal, which I found a bit problematic at the time because it was in pandemic so I was unable to study him very well. He was born from a prosperous landowner, educated in Manila, University of Madrid. Very intelligent man, very intelligent man and his, his uh, let's say at the, for the time he was rather rich for a Filipino because at the time Filipinos were like split in a caste system by the Spanish. This, the whites who ruled highest and the browns, you know, you know that, you know, that, that icky stuff. Yeah. He never advocated actually for Philippine independence. He advocated for the Philippines to unite as part of the Spanish Empire, as a region of the Spanish Empire. Thus, this also started the, how the local government began in the Philippines. Now, he wrote two books. Nolan Metangre, also known as The Social Cancer, and El Filibusterismo, The Reign of Greed. His reputation was very revered in the Philippines. He was a spokesman who of the Philippine reform movement, and he wanted true freedom, not independence, but to reconcile us with the Spanish Empire. Sadly, well, Bad things happen, of course. He became the leader of the propaganda movement. Not propaganda in a bad way. They were using propaganda, strangely enough, in a good way. Through articles of, of a newspaper called La Solidaridad, published in Barcelona. His political program included um, placing the Philippines as a province of Spain and representation in the Cortes, or the Spanish Parliament replacement for the Spanish friars by Filipino priests and well freedom expression survival it's all he ever wanted he wanted peace he was a peaceful man he was a very learned man as well the problem is though his now non-violent reform society the Liga Filipina or the, Phil the League of the Philippines, he was deported to Badapitan, the northwest of Mindanao. He was placed in exile for the four next four years. The reason for this, he was framed by the Spanish friars, the priests, the, the Frolos hmm? Hmm? from, from Notre the Hunchback of Notre Dame. No, 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 the Hunchback of Notre Dame was French, though, but you, you get an idea. The, the Creepos, the, the friars, you know. But essentially, Rizal was arrested and tried for sedition of, by the military. Sedition is essentially how to explain this. Um, yeah, conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or a monarch. Basically, it's uh, slander in the form of treason, or treason in the form of slander. <laughs> kind of, kind of like that. It's sedition, that, that's what it is. He was found guilty and he was publicly executed by a firing squad in Manila. 
though, though there's no proof, according to my teacher, he, right when he was being shot, at the very moment, he turned around and faced the guns, shot to death, fully accepting his fate. Eventually, he wrote, me before his death, ultimo, me ultimo adios, or my last farewell. It's a masterpiece, the 19th century Spanish verse. There are also religious groups following after him. Nowadays, I'm not part of the religious group, I'm sorry. I'm a Roman Catholic. But eventually, his death led to the Philippine Revolution, causing the fall of the Spanish Empire. What, what I believe it is, it, the Philippines is that basically was one of its last colonies, along with Cuba or Cuba, Cuba. Eventually, the Americans got a hold of us, pretended to be saviors, but in reality, they were their purpose of capturing our country was for its imperialist its manifest destiny, its imperialist tendencies that eventually led to the downfall of what once was a dream. A dream meant by as a result for freedom of the Philippines. No, was it, we never had that. Not until today. Today we are uh, considered one of the weakest countries and most corrupt countries in the world. The reason for this is because of the placement. No offense to those who are American or who beloved the Americans is the Westerners. The Westerners made sure through the 4X program. Uh, wait, I'm gonna check the reference. Yes. The 4X program was meant to essentially, basically in layman's terms, it is meant to make the Philippine economy more powerful by um, making sure to limit the Western products in the Philippines and allow for the Philippine products, the native products, to become better and stronger and more resilient than these foreign products. However, due to the politics of the time, the Americans won over one of the presidents and eventually the Americans gained control and gave the decontrol program, which essentially allow the Western countries of the world, the more powerful superpowers of the world to take a hold of our nation. Not only the Western countries, even some East Asian countries. And it is incredibly sad to see how far he had fallen. But it, that shouldn't be. He always believed that the kids of the nation would eventually be free would eventually free the Philippines from this tyranny. Though it's not tyranny at this point. It's just as the remember the movie Henry Luna, he said the greatest enemy of the Filipinos are themselves. And I believe that I really do believe that the Philippines has the power to change. The Philippines has the power to be better. And I truly do believe that. I'm a writer. I only write fan fiction, but I integrate some of the historical facts into my fan fiction. I place them there in order to teach whoever reads it about our history, about our lore, about the problems we face every day. Dirty markets, from dirty markets to corrupt politicians to roads constantly being fixed every single month. The same road and it's already fixed and 
they have to change it for because they can't think of anything any policy any better policy can fix their crap because they know they lose those loopholes when you think about it so philippines please stop and think So, in other words, think, think Philippines, think, think Mark. <laughs> For the young generations who are meant to one day free us from this destructive behavior, make sure you do. I believe in you. But don't do it violently, not at all. Violence bad. Do it by the book. Do it bureaucratically. Even though it's going to be painful. Mind numbingly. Nerve numbingly painful. I believe we can do it. Thank you.